supplies needed for today's project include glassware, something that you want to be able to paint and use. Uh, the shape and size really is up to you. You're going to need some paints. I use folk art. Uh, I can't recommend them any more than, than I already do. They're great paints. I'm going to use uh, white pearl, standard white. I'll be using some black. For the springy colored leaves, I'm going to be using lime green, forest uh, or hauser green, medium, uh, fresh foliage, blue peacock, and then for the fall colored leaves, we'll be using two different reds. One is red cardinal, the other one is called apple red, and we'll use two yellows. One is called moon yellow, and the other one is daffodil yellow. And then um, everything will get topped off with some clear. And that clear will help to give it some additional protection. Additional supplies, uh, this is just water, so I can spray the paints if I want to take a break. A uh, place to clean out your brushes, water in a cup. A number of brushes uh, for this project, I'm going to use a small fan brush. I'm painting on a small glass, so I can't have any large brushes. I like this brush uh, for making various lines and things because it's missing some of its bristles. You can actually cut bristles out of a flat brush if you wanted to create that brush. Uh, so basic rounds and a couple of sizes, and then some very thin uh, all the way down to zero point brushes. A paper towel to wipe my brushes off with as I go. My fancy uh, plastic paper plate that is reusable and washable. And I picked this up at Michael's, um, but you could use two of these. And uh, after you are painting for a while, if you want to take a break, you, this helps keep them from drying out. And then a clean work surface and you're good to go. To paint the tree trunk, you take a little bit of black, very little bit of black, and mix it with some of the white so that you end up with a very light gray. And that'll be the first layer. And we will go back over that with white as a second layer. And I am using a, a pretty small brush. This is a three over zero brush. And I am going back and forth very lightly because I'm painting on glass, I'm laying paint down it's um, a little bit different when you're painting on canvas or paper because glass doesn't have grip. So I have to gently push this paint down. And if you're worried about having an exact edge at the bottom, you can certainly put a little bit of masking tape and just peel it off as soon as you're done painting. But if you've got a steady hand, you should be able to, to do this. And when you get to the bottom, it's just a back and forth motion. And just go a little slower. And when it's wet, you can still, you can always take it back off. And instead of going this way, I'm going this way because I wanna create a little bit of texture on the tree itself. When I do the white, I'll actually go in the opposite direction. And when I, that happens, paint going this way will actually grab the white when I go in the other direction. So this doesn't take long to dry. Um, to put a second coat, just a few minutes. 10, 15 minutes, and if you have a blow dryer, you can always hit it with a blow dryer real quick to, to get it to go faster. What you might wanna do if you've never painted on glass before is uh, Pick up a really cheap piece of glass that you're not worried about, just to practice.
painting different strokes and I can get a sense for how much to lay on there. So, and that's a good first coat. You um, how to turn this into that aspen tree trunk on the bottom. And we're also going to add some branches up into this part of the glass. And it's the same process in terms of the color. I'm going to start off with the gray on the base. And I'll put the white on top of that. When you're doing a branch, it's thicker and then becomes thinner as it comes up. Because I'm turning this entire glass into a tree. I'm just basically press it down and lift it up. And that gives me from thicker to thinner brush strokes. And then if I want those to be even thicker at the base, I just lay a second one down next to it and cross into that first one. And you can see through this paint, it's, it's not really opaque on glass until you get to the second or the third coat. But the first coat's gray, and then we'll follow another coat afterwards, and that'll be white. And then we'll go back and do some highlights. And as an artist, I just have to decide, you know, how many main branches, because this is, if you're looking at, at these aspen trees, there's usually only one or two main branches, but this is a three-dimensional glass that I'm attempting to turn into a tree, so I want to be able to see it from all the sides. So that's why I'm giving it um, four main branches. no matter what side you're looking at, it's, it's going to have a branch on it. I'm just thickening up the bottom of the trunks a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is create some branches coming off of the tree. Not a lot. And I want to use my thinner brush to do that. This is the zero brush. Super small not putting anywhere near as much paint on it. I can always come back and get more if I don't feel like I've got enough. So when I'm looking at the tree, I want that branch to kind of come off this way. Like I need even more, so. With some fresh white, I am going to start applying a layer of white on top of the gray. And I'm not gonna go back and forth or anything. I'm just basically laying it down, nice and thick. And I'm gonna leave the, from, to me, it's the left side, I don't know you it might look like it's the right side but I will leave the gray on the left side peeping through because what that's going to do is create a shadow and I will cover almost all of the gray on the right side but if some is still showing through that's fine it just creates dimension and depth starts to give you a tree trunk. I'll go around and do that to each of these branches on the side and the trunk and then I'll do the actual stem of the glass last. Be 
everything I'm going to do. So very little pressure and about half of the amount of paint that I was putting on before. And I'm actually kind of dragging it. And since I'd made the bumps going that way, dragging the white up on this, I'm going to leave some of that gray showing through intentionally. I mean, I'm trying to create a little bit more realistic looking trunk. And I'm trying to do it in a way that's a little less work for me. If I go back and forth, I'm gonna fill in all of the texture I created. So I'm just going in one direction. The other thing I'm gonna do is actually glob on some white. And when you look at, at aspen trees, birch trees are very similar. The trunks are, are very much the same. Um, you're going to have some of these cross lines and some styrations and, and just different shapes within them. So I'm gonna help that process get started. By leaving some goopier type paint. And then we'll do another layer on top of the white. And at that point, we'll draw the little lines. We'll make the little, I don't know what we call it, eye marks where bits of trunk shows where maybe a previous branch used to be. And I, I'm going thicker in some of these spots and it's so that the white shows more as white white and not as bleed through gray white because that can happen quite a bit. Right, so the only thing left will be the dark gray, but I can't do that until this dries. Now the first two colors of the trunk are on. I'm gonna finish up the trunk and take my zero brush. I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of black. I'm gonna go to my light gray and make it a much darker gray. We don't wanna use straight black on this. Just don't think it'll look as good. And I don't have too much paint on the brush. I mean, I have some, but I don't have a tremendous amount because what I'm gonna be doing is just drawing in some lines and those lines are gonna be going across. There's not too many of them, just an occasional line here or there. thinner lines at the top and as I go down I'll make them a little bit thicker and once I get to the bottom of the trunk itself they'll be a good bit thicker and they're alternating and because I've got some of the gray peeking through I'll actually leverage that and I'll create an occasional circle a little bit of line across the top and the bottom and that kind of gives the idea that there might have been a branch there at one point. Uh, one side and the other. The white pearl is going to dull down the darker gray, create a little bit of shimmer. I'm just going to use this brush, it's the three, or zero three. You can tell when the paint's dry because it's not as shiny as it was when it first started. So I'm just gonna loosely drop some of this down. I'm not worried about the brush stroke even. I'm not giving it a 100% coat. I'm just kinda tossing some of it on there. Since 
I want to dull the gray down a little bit, I am making sure I'm covering the gray. see the shimmer or not on the camera. Tree trunk's finished. So the next part of the glass is going to be all the foliage and the customer has asked that I do something with this picture here. So what I'm doing is a set where there's going to be a picture or a, a, actually it is a picture. It's going to have this basic scene on it. And then on one side is going to be more of a spring color and the other side of the painting will be all the fall colors. So I'm gonna do four glasses. I'll do two in spring and two in fall. And what I'm teaching you is how to do the glass itself. I'll do a separate video on the picture. So. But it's good to have something, um, if you're not familiar with the subject, because I live in South Florida and we don't have aspen trees down here. I have a lot of palm trees, but no aspen trees. So it's good to have photos of um, things that you're trying to, to paint. To do the fall leaves, we're gonna start off with a red cardinal or cardinal red color don't need much paint, but I am going to use fan brush. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on the tips of the brush. I'm not using a whole lot of paint. And what I'm gonna do is push it on there. As I get higher, I want it to be spread out lower. And then as I get higher, it's going to be spread out a whole lot less. Kind of like a, a triangle shape. And I'm going to repeat that you can always add more if you want to put a whole lot that's up to you it's really your decision on what you think looks good I'm really just dabbing this. The next color, which is apple red, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna allow some of the cardinal red to show through. You can see I'm not using a whole lot of paint. You can always put more out. It's hard to get it back in the jar. You can do it, but it's, it's a little more difficult. And at this point, the paint that's on there isn't 100% dry, but it's close enough. I'm not overly worried about it being too dry. And I'm going back over what I had just done. These will be the under colors for what will end up being the yellows and oranges. you'll be able to see a slight difference between the two colors. It's not a big difference, but your eye is going to see it as a difference as the colors get put on. Clean this really good. Kind of dry all the excess water off of it. 
refan my brush, and then I'm going to move on to the next color. Next color is Moon Yellow. And I'm gonna lay this right next to the red because I'm going to want to mix some of the red with some of the Moon Yellow. And to do that, I'm just gonna grab another one of my brushes, bring some of this over and do a little bit of mixing. Not a huge amount, just a little bit actually want it to be a little bit streaky. I'm going to grab some of the streaky and I'm going to go back and I'm going slightly above the last area. You can start to see the appearance of leaves take shape. So remember, you're not painting the actual leaves, especially on something this small. What you're doing is you're suggesting the leaves and your, your brain will actually put those leaves in there for you. by not fully mixing the paint, I'm able to get more depth. So. Now it's starting to have the appearance of trees. The moon yellow. If you end up with too much paint on your brush, just press it down on your palette to get some of the excess off. You can always add more, you can't take it away. I'm going just above the last set of colors and the paint's still wet, so I'm actually getting some mixing on the canvas automatically and that's, actually, that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. And how many leaves you put, it's totally up to you. You can leave a lot of white space. You can start to fill it in a whole lot more. So after you've got basically your first set of the moon yellow, step back and start taking a look at it and deciding, you know, do I, do I want to put a whole lot more? Am I good with this amount? Because the final color is the highlight on the leaves. And that's going to be where we add in that daffodil yellow. put this yellow close to the other yellow because I'll probably dab a little bit of both at some point. So first thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of paint on here and these are my highlights. So I don't want these everywhere. I just want them at the very tip in a few places where I want to make it look like the sun is reacting.
Once this dries good, I'm gonna just put a coat of clear on it. I'll try not to put clear on the unpainted part of the glass, but it, it'll get on it a little bit. That's okay. I hope this helps you with any glass painting you're looking to do. Make something beautiful today. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And that tells me to continue to make videos. And if you want to purchase any of my things that I've made, because I do sell uh, glasses and various crafts and things on Etsy, um, I will put a link in the description to that, as well as to where you can get uh, some of the supplies that I use. Have a great day. Now that I've completed the two that are fall foliage, I'm gonna work on the spring. I'm gonna start with the darkest color. In this case, it's Blue Peacock, which is a blue-green. Small amount of that. I'm gonna grab my fan brush, make sure that it's all fanned out and that it's not wet. It's okay if it's damp, but you just don't want it to be really wet. It's the same exact process. I'm gonna put some color on the edge of the brush and I'm starting to make the lines that are going to be where the branches are going out. You can always add more you cannot take away. You'll notice I'm not doing the branches on the exact same level either. Um, and there's a reason for that. I don't want to look like a bunch of uh, pine trees. It's not cookie cutter. You can use a pattern underneath the glass. I'll even do a video and show you how to do that successfully but it's not required. There's for the dark blue. And to give you some idea of about how much I put on, I can always add more. It's the Hauser Green Medium. If you don't have these exact colors, that's fine. I think you get the idea. You want the darkest color to go down first, the next darkest next. And you go lighter with each layer. And then, with this color, I'm going to mix these two together. Before I put the green, I'll put the uh, green that's got a lot of the blue mixed in with it. I'm putting it right above the prior color with some overlap. This next layer is just the How's your medium green? I'm going right on top of some of the other colors and a little bit above it. The next color is lime green. And it's pretty bright, so I'm gonna try a little bit of it and make sure I like that color before I commit to the entire thing. It's considerably brighter than what I was using for the other two. I 
like it. Okay. And the final color is fresh foliage. So I will put some of it only on like maybe the right side of a tree and see how I like that. much. I'll throw some of the other colors down. look and decide if you're done or if you feel like there needs to be some more somewhere. When you decide you're finished, then you stop. Let it dry and then we'll put a clear coat on it to finish it off. Everything's dry and we are now going to put a coat of clear on top of all the other paint and that should allow us to have some additional protection. And I'm not worried about strokes, I'm just kind of globbing it on. And what that's gonna do is give it a little texture on top of the existing texture, which will simply help make everything look even more like a tree. So you can see, hopefully, it looks milky white. It will dry totally clear. And yes, you can glob this on. Uh, I wouldn't put it on super thick, but you can absolutely glob it on. Let it dry for 24 hours before you bake it. Follow the instructions. If you buy different paints, you'll find that the instructions are similar, but they might be different on the length of time that you have to bake it in the oven. Folk art enamels uh, require 350 degrees for 30 minutes. When you put them in the oven, it's very important that they go into the oven cold. The oven should be cold. The glass should be cold. Just sit it on top of a baking pan or something. Uh, unless you've put paint on the bottom of the glass, you don't have to worry about sitting it on anything like aluminum foil or anything like that. The You put it in the oven, turn the oven on at 350 degrees and I usually set it for 36 minutes because I know my oven takes six minutes to get to 350 degrees. Your oven's gonna be different, so allow for a few additional minutes. The extra time's not going to affect the paint in a negative way. But I wanna make sure that I get good adherence, uh, adhesion, I guess, and that the paint is fully activated. When it's done, I turn the oven off I wait about 10 minutes and then I come over and I crack the door and I open it and close it a couple of times, about halfway to kind of start cooling the oven down. You don't want to pull the glass out until it's cool enough that you can pick it up because glass going from a hot temperature to a cold temperature will crack and that would be terrible after all the work you did to make something really pretty. As far as can it go like in a toaster oven? Absolutely, it just has to fit. And what you definitely do not want is to have the 
painted part touching any part of the oven. So the size of the oven, size of the glass, all of that makes a difference. Let's say you decide that you want to paint something really tall, like a decanter or um, a vase. You need to make sure before you even start that you're going to be able to fire it. Now, let's say you can't fire it for some reason. These paints will cure in 21 days, but they will never cure uh, by air as good as they will cure in the oven. The heat uh, is what really activates that glue. So if it's something that's going to have to stand up to a lot of washing, like a wine glass will, you're gonna wanna be able to fire it in the oven. As far as odors and things, there will be some odor from the paint when it's in the oven. It's nothing terrible, it's not a toxic odor or anything, but you will, will be able to smell it a little bit. Some people buy uh, tall toaster type ovens and use them separate from regular cooking. I don't really cook in my oven. All my kids are grown up, so I don't have to worry about making cookies and stuff like that. So. Once you've done covering up all the trees, then uh, the last thing I'll do is the stem of the glass. So it's hard for me to talk and paint at the same time. Old age. And what I'll do to do the bottom is just put my hand in the glass itself so that I can hold it and give it a nice heavy coat. Same, same thing with the, the tree part. I'm not worried about strokes. In fact, if anything, I want my strokes to kind of help create more texture on the tree itself. Now, folk art uh, will dry within an hour, um, but because I put it on thick, I like to let it sit overnight before I fire it. But if you're putting it on thin, you can bake it an hour later. I just don't usually do it that way. Now let's say you do all of this and you decide that you want to personalize it, put a name or something on the glass. A lot of times what I will do is print that personalization out on copy paper, uh, nice and neat in a font that I like and put it under the glass so that when I'm doing it, I, I have something I can follow. I just have terrible handwriting, but that's it. We will fire these up tomorrow and they will be ready for the customer. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like and subscribe and you have a wonderful day.